Hello, everybody. Are we having a good conference so far? Second day, afternoon, little, you know, energy is kind of, uh, but uh, we're here. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about Nix in the Wild. Uh, but first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Ross. Uh, I work at Flox. Uh, I've worked at a bunch of other places. I have contact information. I won't dwell too much here. Uh, what I do at Flox is I'm head of words, pictures, and objects. And um, that's not an official title, but that's actually what I do. Um, I write words, I make graphs and charts and things, and I create objects. And wait a second, objects. Yeah, I said objects. It's not a common thing. I'm the one who's been making all these Nix bricks, and I thought I'd hijack this lightning talk for like three slides to talk about the process a little bit. On the left-hand side of this is the board that all the dishes has been carved into. The one in the upper left was a mistake. On the right, this is what it looks like after the snowflake has been carved, while the Nix itself is being carved into the bricks. Um, on the left here, this is what it looks like after all the Nixes have been carved out. And on the right, this is what it looks like after the epoxy has been poured into the, uh, the, the space left behind the carving and uh, is starting to get planed out a little bit. Um, and here is what it looks like when there's a final batch of Nix bricks before, uh, before it gets cut out. And then on the right is what it looks like when it's all packaged up to come out here. Uh, I thought I'd give you a bit of a look into that. And also, I'm making the pogs, and I thought I'd let you know exactly what the distribution of colors are so you can understand the relative rarity of the different, uh, the different pogs. Um, anyway, enough about that. So, <laughs> thank you. This, uh, this is my hobby. I'm very lucky that I can integrate my hobby into my work in this way. Not everybody can do that, uh, and I can. And it means that when I'm tired of uh, making words and pictures, I can go into the garage and not feel bad about making things, is really what it is. Um, so, Nix in the Wild. Uh, at Flux, we've had a lot of interviews with a lot of Nix users over the past year as we're building our product and um, building a lot of prototypes. And as we're having these conversations, we're realizing there are a lot of fantastic Nix stories out there really, really good, compelling Nick stories, and we didn't see them being captured anywhere. And um, that's, that's the reason that our team decided to do this. Uh, the reason that I care about this is because I've been working in open source for almost 30 years, and I hadn't really come across Nix until four months ago, and I find that really, really remarkable. And so I care about this because I think these stories really, really need to be told. So that's why Nix in the Wild. Um, so what is Nix in the Wild? Uh, it's a very simple thing. Um, we meet with people who use Nix, we ask them about their experience, and then we write an article that covers these areas. Uh, who the user is, what was the need, uh, what was uh, the solution they came up with, what did they run into along the way that made it challenging, uh, and what were the results, and what do they hope happens in the future for Nix. So this is a very basic story that we're capturing, and we're putting it at nixinthewild.com. Uh, so that everybody can read it. Um, I'm not going to spoil a lot of these stories because I genuinely want you to read them, but I'll give you a little bit of a taste. Uh, one of them is from Prisma, which is uh, an open source database toolkit. Uh, and the pull quote from this one, I have to read it here, it's too small there, is, there's so much opportunity to bring down the pain in getting started, to reduce friction and make Nix easier for others to adopt. And I thought that was a really interesting quotation from, uh, from the person from Prisma. Um, another one is from PDT Partners, which is a quant company. This one was, it's easy to look at Nix and dismiss it, to underestimate it, but then burn so much time working around problems that Nix would solve. Doing it the right way is worth it in the end. And I thought that was a really interesting conclusion to come to. Um, another story from SIF Technologies, which is a company that specializes in uh, uh, information curation and recommendations. This one's pretty pithy. It clicked in my brain. This is how you should manage computers. Um, so these are like the quotes that come out of the full story. And finally, uh, I'll tease one from Looker, which is uh, one of the GCP offerings. Uh, and they said, the build pro uh, this is a paraphrase. Um, these are things that were actually said by Farid, but I didn't get the actual quote. So the build process evolved from a giant readme with tons of detail to one command, reducing onboarding time significantly during a period of rapid growth. And this is the kind of story we're trying to capture with like actual impact that Nix has had in these organizations. So I, I'm keeping this slow. I think I'm going to catch us up on time, which is really good. And there are two things that I want from you. Uh, the first is um, read the Nix in the Wild stories. Uh, we want you to read these. Uh, give us feedback on them. Uh, some of you in this room uh, are covered in these stories. Others of you in this room, we have drafts currently, and we want to tell all of your stories. So um, read the stories, see what they are, and then tell us about your story, and you'll get a brick. And it's at nixinthewild.com. So thank you very much.